to first Samuel. First Samuel chapter seven. I want you to find it as fast as you can, please. First Samuel chapter seven. Anybody happy to be in God's house today? Amen. 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 First Samuel chapter seven. Our come here as we find it, please say amen. First Samuel seven. I'm going to read verses twelve through fourteen. First Samuel seven verses twelve through fourteen. And the word of the Lord says. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mitzvah and Shen, and named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more within the border of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel. From Ekron even to Gad, and Israel delivered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. So there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Uh, this afternoon, I want to preach just for a little while using as a subject, Ebenezer. Would you just say that name with me? Ebenezer. Ebenezer means hitherto the Lord has helped us. If you believe that, would you say glory to God with me? Glory to God. Ebenezer, the Lord has been our stone of help. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this afternoon. You made it to the last Sunday of 2020. Amen. The Lord has been faithful. And yet at the same time, we've seen that this year has been unlike any other. It has been a unique year, for many a challenging year, for many a year of testing and tribulations. Just consider some of the challenges we have faced this year, from national challenges, global challenges, some of us personal challenges, started, in my opinion, with the fatal crash of beloved star Kobe Bryant. But just a few weeks after that, the world was introduced to the coronavirus. This year goes on record as one of the busiest and longest hurricane seasons in recent history. This year, for six months, our church and many like us did not even congregate in person church from March until September more than half of the entire year we were not even able to meet together in person not to mention the injustice against George Floyd not to mention lost wages lost hours and for many lost jobs canceled vacations toilet paper shortages <laughs> coin shortages, murder hornets, all of these things culminating in what is arguably one of the most embarrassing and laughable elections in the history of the United States. And yet, in the midst of all of this, I'm humbled and honored as the pastor of Destiny Fellowship to report that this year, with all of these things going on, your church served more than 700 people in person. Amen. Through social media outlets, not just Facebook, including Instagram, our website, YouTube, and many other outlets, we did our best to estimate. It seemed like we reached conservative estimate is at least 13,000 people online. Amen. This year, we saw 29 individuals give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ in salvation. Amen. We baptized 19 individuals in water. 19 individuals in water. Nine students enrolled in Bible school and seminary this year, 2020. Amen. Through Global Mission and Generation J, we've been able to even make disciples in as many as nine separate countries. I wish you could help me give God praise and honor for everything 
that means for us. Never about us, but it's amazing what God can do. I said it's amazing what God can do. In First Samuel 7, we see the prophet declaring a series of remarks concerning Israel. You see, we've been through a tough season and a tough year, but tough years and tough seasons are nothing new. Virtually every generation has faced their own brand of tough seasons and tough years. The Israelites had faced theirs in 1 Samuel 6 and 7. It had been attack after attack for them. The men of Kirith Jerim had attacked them. And then the Philistines had attacked them. It had been one thing after another. And yet the Lord used the prophet Samuel to remind them that God had given them the victory. And so the prophet Samuel stands and he declares three things in this passage that I believe are relevant for us as we close out this year. Here's our first one. I hope you're taking notes. The first thing Samuel declared is the Lord has helped us. Amen. Man, I don't even know if I need to preach the rest of this sermon. That's enough for me. The Lord has helped us this year. He, he's helped us when we couldn't help ourselves. He's helped us when a stimulus wasn't enough help. He's helped us when politicians couldn't help us. He's helped us when we couldn't even meet together. The Lord has helped us. In fact, I'm convinced the only reason we're here today is because the Lord has helped us. And so we find the prophet Samuel. He takes a couple of stones and, and he brings them together and he shapes a, a monument. He makes a memorial to commemorate everything that God had done for his people. This was in keeping with the habits and the customs of the Old Testament patriarchs, you see. Many times when God would do something on behalf of his people, before they did anything else, they would stop, gather some rocks, and make a monument to commemorate what God had done. If you remember the great patriarch Jacob in Genesis 28, he fell asleep, he used a, a rock for a pillow. And it's there in that vision where he saw what we call Jacob's ladder. Y'all remember that? He sees a ladder touching heaven and touching earth and angels going up and coming down on that ladder. But when Jacob woke up, he realized he had an encounter with God. And so he took that stone he was using for a pillow. He set it up. He anointed it with oil. And he called it Bethel. Because that stone was a monument to commemorate his encounter with God. Something similar happens in Joshua chapters 3 and 4. Right before the people of Israel are ready to go into the promised land, they also erect a monument, a memorial of gratitude unto the Lord. You see, when they came out of Egypt, the Lord parted the Red Sea. But in order for them to get into the promised land, the Lord had to dry up the Jordan River. They didn't know how they were going to cross it. The Lord miraculously created a dam at the city of Adam. And the Bible says that that roaring river of the Jordan became a dry riverbed. And again, God's people crossed on dry land. All of the people of Israel had crossed over to the other side. But Joshua stopped in that dried up riverbed. And he took 12 stones. A stone for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he said, these stones, Joshua 4, 9, these stones shall be a memorial for what God has done. In other words, church, Joshua said, I'm, I'm not going to cross over to the other side without stopping and they
We're just singing, he's a way maker, miracle worker. Ooh, I need some help in here this afternoon. He can bring us out of tight places. He, he can bring us out of trouble. I lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my easer, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. I, I want to testify. I want to give God glory. I know there was a whole lot of things wrong with this year, but I'm not going to give more credit and glory to the kingdom of Satan than we do to God. God has been good. God has been my helper. God has been my stone and my rock. Hallelujah. Now this year, I'm sure uh, this week we celebrated Christmas and Seems like the networks were inundated with Christmas movies like Home Alone and the Santa Claus and my favorite Christmas story, You'll Shoot Your Eye Out, and all of these wonderful Christmas movies. One of the most famous Christmas stories is A Christmas Carol from Charles Dickens. Everybody knows the name of the main character, and he is Scrooge. Do y'all remember his first name? Ebenezer. His Ebenezer Scrooge. He's Ebenezer because even Charles Dickens admitted he took the name of Scrooge from 1 Samuel chapter 7. Because when he's describing the character of Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge, he says that his character was hard like a rock. He was hard like a stone. And yet what happens in A Christmas Carol is Ebenezer Scrooge is given the opportunity to look back on some of his life experiences. You know, I'm all excited for 2021. I'm ready for change and all of those things. But, man, I got to tell you, before we go forward, take some time to look back. Because there's some things, yeah, we dealt with it together as a nation, as a people, as a community, as a church. But there's some things that only you and your family went through and only you know about. Perhaps there's some personal things that you went through that nobody knows, just you and God. Maybe there were some times you wanted to give up. Maybe your relationship with God was hanging on by a thread. Maybe you were battling fear and doubt and discouragement. Maybe you could feel the weight and the heaviness of depression threatening to destroy your home. I don't know what your challenge was, but, but I just want us to look back from January to December of 2020, and see that in spite of everything we went through, Hallelujah. God was our Ebenezer. Amen. Our stone. Amen. If you've got nothing else to give God praise for this afternoon, can I just tell you, how about the fact that you made it? Yeah. How about the fact that you're in God's house on a Sunday afternoon, last Sunday of the year, taking time to just say, God, thank you. God, I give you praise. God, I give you glory. I hope you get the pattern of this service. We're going to do that the rest of the service. That, that's what today is about. It's stopping and saying, God, you have been the rock. Great missionary Hudson Taylor had a plaque. I've seen pictures of this plaque. It had a plaque in his office. It just had two names on it. It said Ebenezer and it said Jehovah Jireh. I love that concept because it was a way for Hudson Taylor to look back on his past and say, hitherto the Lord has helped me. But that other title, Jehovah Jireh, we interpret it as my provider, but, but that word, Gireh, it, it literally means to see. And if you read it in Genesis 22, Jehovah Jireh is literally the Lord will see to it. Mm. The missionary was reminding himself, if God has helped me in the past, then God will see to it in the future. Amen. If God's been my Ebenezer in 2020, he'll be my Jehovah Jireh in 2021. If the Lord has helped me this year, I know God can see to it next year. If God has been faithful this year, I know he can provide for me next year. I, I know he'll be true to his word. Amen. I got two more. I got to hurry. Three. Samuel made a couple of declarations. He said, the Lord has helped us. Here's the second one. He declared, verse 13, the enemy has been defeated. Oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all going to have to come get me, I'm telling you. The enemy has been defeated. 
Man, I just like saying that the enemy has been defeated. The enemy's been defeated. I'm in mean, verse 13. It says, so the Philistines were subdued. You'll see that? And they did not come anymore within the border of Israel because the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. Amen. I know you've had a whole lot of enemies in this year, but can I remind you, every enemy that came up against you, guess what? God was against it. God stood on our behalf against our enemies. It was the blood of the Lamb that, that stood against pandemic and coronavirus and COVID-19. It, it's been the blood of the Lamb that has protected us all these years, all, all these months, all these weeks, all these days. It's been the Lord. It's been the Lamb of God. It's been the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Why? Because the enemy has been defeated. Amen. And I know you're wondering, perhaps, why the enemy? What? Why, what is this enemy? I just need to remind you, if you didn't know this already, that we have an adversary, Come on. 1 Peter 5, 7. And he would like nothing more than to see you defeated, destroyed, and demolished. For the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. I don't know if you understand just how much Satan hates your guts. Come on, that's right. He hates you because God loves you. Yeah, that's right. He despises you because you're made in the image of God. He hates you because he knows his time is short. He knows his eternal state has been sealed, and he wants to take as many people as possible with him. Yeah. That's right. So I need you to backtrack with me in 1 Samuel 7. I need you to go all the way back to verse 7 with me, please. Watch this. It's when the Philistines heard that the sons of Israel gathered against the Philistines went up against Israel. Did you that? When did the enemy attack? The enemy attacked when God's people were doing what God's people were supposed to be doing. The enemy doesn't attack Christians who are doing nothing. Come on. Breathe. The enemy attacks people who are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. That's right. The enemy attacks praisers. The enemy attacks worshipers. The enemy attacks tithers and givers and generous believers. The enemy attacks evangelists and makers of disciples. The enemy attacks churches that are doing something. The enemy attacks churches that are more than just anniversaries and pastor's day, but churches that know how to go to the highways and byways and compel others that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The enemy doesn't go after nobody. So if you've been attacked this year, come on. let it serve as a reminder that you're the right person in the right place doing the right thing. Here's the good news. The enemy's been defeated. Man, I gotta hurry. In fact, Brother Pete, will you help me so I can finish faster? Praise the Lord Jesus. So watch this. I just need to show you how the enemy was defeated. I'm in verse 13. I need you to look at it with me. First Samuel 7. The enemy was defeated. I want to backtrack just a bit to verse 8. It says, The sons of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry for the Lord our God for us. What, what does that mean? You see, Samuel is known as a praying prophet. And lest we think it was because of our own strength, because of our own faith, or because of our own holiness that we made it this far, we need to remember there is power in prayer. Let me ask you, how did you survive 2020? There it is. Let it be prayer as your answer. How many know that demons still tremble at the sound of his name? How many know that if we ask anything according to his word in faith, that if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it must be moved. How many know prayer still works? Amen. See, Samuel is the praying prophet. Even Jeremiah acknowledged his ministry of prayer. Samuel and Moses are the great intercessors of Israel. They were always going to God on behalf of God's people. And so that's why we see in verse 8, they come to Samuel and say, Samuel, pray for us. 
Jeremiah the prophet, even in Jeremiah 15, verse 1, he makes mention of Samuel's great intercessory ministry. And I'm grateful. I have people in my life that pray for me. How many of you are grateful? You know that this year, people prayed for you. And if you didn't know, I want you to know you got a church that prays for you. Amen. I wish I could say I pray every day for you. I don't. I pray as often as I can. And many times I, your pastors pray for you by name, not just a general canvas. Lord, bless our church. Lord, help us. I try my best to go before the Lord because Hebrews says I have an obligation as a pastor to give account for those that we shepherd and that I am to do it with joy and gladness in his presence. And I try to go before God and lift up your name before him and say, God, do a work in that family. God, bless them. God, protect them. God, do a work in their life. It's been prayer. Verse 9, watch this. Samuel takes a lamb and he places it on the altar as a burnt offering to the Lord. How did they make it? They made it through prayer and they made it through their worship. Amen. Amen. How did we get this far in 2020? I, I don't know what your testimony is. I think mine is we made it through prayer and we made it through worship. And I know it's not as fun worshiping online or worshiping on Zoom, but I'm trying to tell you that the enemy couldn't stop us from praising. The enemy couldn't stop us from worshiping. The enemy couldn't stop us from getting into his word. The enemy couldn't stop us from dropping to our knees at the side of our bed and crying out to God and saying, God, have mercy. God, move. God, save. God, heal. God, deliver. My prayer is that your worship life has intensified this year. Because now you've got more motivation than ever to worship God. Yes. You've seen his power. You, you've seen what God can do. You know something about who he is. Watch this. I'm almost done. I need to look at verse 11. What happens when they pray? What happens when they worship? Verse 11 says, they chase the enemy all the way down to Beth Carr. <laughs> all right. By now, most of you know Beth means house. The question is, what is Carr? Car means lamb. All right, let me try that again. Come on. The enemy was defeated at the house of the lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. The Lord has helped us. The enemy's been defeated. I got one more, and I'm going home. Three. This is my favorite one. Verse 14. Let's do it again. The Lord has helped us. The enemy has been defeated. Watch this. This is Samuel's last declaration. What was lost will be restored. Amen. Don't take my word for it. Read it again. The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel, verse 14, were restored to Israel. All right, let me try this side. The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel. Yeah. What, what did you lose this year? Did you lose time? I felt like we lost time. And we had all these goals for the ministry this year. We're going to do this and go here and go there and go to Belize and do missions trips. I, I feel like we lost some opportunities. Did you lose wages? Did you lose a job? Did you lose a loved one? Did you lose some relationships? Did you lose some motivation? Did you lose some momentum? Did you lose some hope? I've got an assignment today to tell you. What was lost must be restored. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Can I tell you one last thing? There's a principle in Exodus 22, verse 7. You don't have to read it. Let me just explain it real quick. Your Bible says that when a thief is caught, he has to pay back double. Please don't accuse God of smiting the earth with sickness. Don't give him credit. Or something that the kingdom of darkness does. 
Let me say it again. John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, but I come that you may have life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. So watch this. When the thief is discovered, some translations say when the thief is uncovered. It's literally, watch this, if a thief is revealed, King James says, if the thief be found out, he must pay back double. All right, so watch this. Most of you guys know in the book of Job, Job lost almost everything, right? And by the end of the book, chapter 42, he gets double. Y'all know that. What we don't realize is that somewhere in the book of Job are these two super long chapters. And it just seems like it's poetry because God is describing this sea monster named Leviathan. Y'all ever read that? And, and then God is describing this land monster in another chapter called Behemoth. There's all this speculation. Is, is, is God describing dinosaurs or what's happening? Is this a Loch Ness monster? Who knows? So watch this. What, what, what they begin to, to realize is that the reason God took two chapters in Job to explain and describe Leviathan and Behemoth to Job is because God was in keeping with his word. He was uncovering the thief. Amen. He was revealing the thief to yeah. Job. He was saying, Job, I didn't take everything from you. It was the thief. Come on. And if the thief be discovered, he has to pay back double. Amen. My declaration for 2021 is, is I want double for everything we expected Amen. this year. Amen. I'm grateful for 19 water baptisms. I'm believing we've got to have at least 40 baptisms Hallelujah. next year. I'm not just talking about money and cars and houses. I'm, I'm talking about let's reach twice as many people. Let's see twice as many salvations. Let's see twice as many people filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's see twice as much giving in our church. Let's see twice as much outreach and ministry and evangelism and discipleship. Yeah. We're coming for double. For everything we went through, I, I'm coming back for double. So here's my encouragement for you. If you can survive this, you can make it. You can survive anything. I'm looking at a church full of winners. I'm looking at a church full of conquerors. To he who overcomes, will he grant to sit at the side of the Lamb? To, to him who overcomes, will he allow to eat from the tree of life? I'm looking at overcomers. I, I'm glad to be in the house of, of the Lord with overcomers, with, with people who love the Lord and people who love to worship God and people who don't mind building a monument of thanksgiving unto him and saying, God, before I cross over, I'm stopping right here and I'm saying thank you. Come on, would you stand to your feet with me? That's how I want to finish this service today. I want you to build a monument of praise. Can, can we praise him for marriages? 